Welcome back to video number seven of the 1913 Duesenberg Cycle Cart Build Series. Today we're going to tackle the front uh, axle and front suspension pieces. So previously we showed you how the springs are installed, now we're going to show you how the drop axle and spindles are put together. We're going to be discussing Ackerman, Kingpin inclination, caster and camber, and how it applies to cycle cart. So uh, let's take a look at the workbench, see what we got going on. Okay guys, so full disclosure, I do not have a tubing bender, so I send this out to a local guy named Roy Fields, uh, Fields Fabrication here in Phoenix, not far from my house. He's a race car builder and does all kinds of fabrication. And uh, he's got a tubing bender and he does great welding. He's an aircraft certified welder. So I have him weld my kingpin uh, mount, this weldment that comes from Azusa, and also have him weld the, the spindle bolt. He's got a TIG welder, and of course you can see those welds. That's a nice weld. Um, this is gonna get cleaned up and painted, so this one doesn't matter, but this one's gonna be exposed, or, or it'll be painted, but won't need any cleaning. Uh, these bolts come from Azusa. I'll show you where uh, the part numbers and all that in just a second. So this has kingpin inclination. If you can see this bolt is not straight up and down. Straight up and down would be more or less, I'm sorry, let me get my tape measure out here. More or less like this. That's straight up and down. You can see there's a difference. So this is a drawing that Dennis Thomas came up with. This is, uh, this is my version of his drawing. Uh, 30.75 between the uprights works if you're running negative uh, camber. Uh, if you're running positive camber or if you're going straight up and down, this is a little too wide. So the G tri G V rules want you at 39 inches on the outside edges of your tires. Uh, if you go over that, it's probably not a big deal, but to stay within the rules, this needs to be a little bit narrower. So what I did was I shortened this thing. And also because we're doing the KPI, if we use this measurement here, it actually pushes the axle out further this way. So it makes it wider. So I'm on my red cart, I've got that problem. So not a big deal, but on this one, I wanted to make you know, kind of accommodate that measurement. So this measurement on this drawing would actually be uh, 28 inches. So I redrew it over here, 28 inches at the top of the weldment, which is here. So if you go from weldment to weldment, I think this far enough back, uh, all the way over here, that's 28 inches at the very top right here at the measurement. So you keep that measurement, then that will put your wheel because your wheel's about three inches wide from the bearing, bearing flange to the outside edge. So it, with you put a little couple spacers in here, it's gonna put it out here. And that should be right around 39 inches at the outside edges of your tires. If you run negative um, camber, then your tires would be closer together at the bottom, which is where they measure it. Um, for the spring mounts, we're 17 and a half inches before the bends start. So there's a mark right here. This bends a little bit before that mark, which is not the end of the world. The U-bolts uh, will accommodate that. So not a big deal, but you have to have enough space for your frame to fit in between before the bends kick in. Um, we're roughly eight inches from the kingpin to the bottom where the, the flat part of it is. Um, a little higher would be a little bit better, but this works out fine. Uh, here's the components. There's gonna be some U-bolts. I'll show you the part numbers in a second. I manufactured these um, to fit and I made it, this little bolt I welded in the center of this. Uh, on your spring, you see here there's a hole. So instead of bolting it there, it's just basically just a locator pin that keeps your axle from sliding back and forth on the, on the fitment. So to get the KPI, I use this tool here to find 14 degrees and a couple pieces of angle iron and I welded this together uh, so that when we weld it at the metal shop, your tube fits in there, the bolt fits in there and bam, 14 degrees every day. You can make this over and over again. Uh, just basically made a little fixture. Got to kind of space the bolt out so it's at least parallel. But that works out great, and that way my uh, Roy didn't have to struggle with making that work properly. So that's a simple deal. It's just two pieces of angle iron welded together. Um, on this cart, we're going to be reusing the tie rods from the, pre the kind of the donor cart. These are 3 8 inch. These are a little bit bigger than the other ones, where they think are 5 16 which is kind of standard. So the, I'll have to uh, make these holes a little bit bigger um, for the 5 8 inch. This is for the 5 inch uh, steering shaft. So. Before I show you a whole lot here, I'm going to show you these are the uh, pitman arms, or not pitman arms, spindle attachments, I suppose. These are going to get welded onto here, parallel to the ground, so we'll show you that later in the video. But I wanted to show you what Ackerman is. So this, this demonstrates where a normal cycle cart uh, tie rod would be mounted. We're going to move it over about one inch, which is what this little drawing shows you. This is one inch over. That's what I have on my red cart, and it works great. Um, Ackerman just keeps the thing steering properly, steering geometry. So this is Ackerman. Uh, from where your tie rods are at to the center of your rear axle, you'll 
put a string line on that kind of shows you where your placement is going to be for your tie rod placement. And then kingpin inclination, I'm sure these drawings these are pretty neat. Uh, this is upside down, so. So you can see there's a uh, straight line here. There's your representation of your wheel and your kingpin. You want that line to, imaginary line to intersect the center of your tire and that increases or decreases your scrub radius however you move this in and out. Typically a cycle cart would be over here if you had an imaginary line going through the kingpin. Uh, this helps to correct the geometry of the front of the cart. This is what normal cars use, everyday driving cars, racing cars, all have kingpin inclination built into the suspension. Um, cycle carts typically do not, so this is something different. I did on my red cart. I know Albert Lies did. I think this is Albert Lies' drawing, actually. So thank you, Albert, for the, the guidance on that. And here's a representation of what a normal car would look like, kind of showing the scrub raise. If you want to learn more about that, you can, of course, Google that. They can explain it a lot better than I can because I'm not an engineer. I'm just following what they did with some success, hopefully. Um, what was the third drawing here? What was that? Oh, yeah, uh, caster. So a caster, uh, we, we're doing seven degrees of caster. So this is the angle of the, we're going to look at your side of your kingpin. This is straight up and down. We're going to put a little caster into it, so we tilt it backwards. If you see this is kind of up off the table a little bit, when we mount this axle straight up and down on the cart, the axles tip back seven degrees. And that helps the wheels go straight. If you look over the steering wheel, the wheels will go straight down the road. So here's a list of the parts. I'll go down this page slowly. Uh, BMI is where I got most of these uh, weldments and bolts. So the spindle bracket, which is that part right there. This is an Azusa part number, I believe. Uh, it's a 5 8 inch ID. They're not very expensive. Um, then the spindle bolt, which is this, the big bolt right here. 5 8 by 18. It's a dollar sixty. This is cheaper than on the hardware store, folks. Uh, then you'll need a 5 8 by 18 nylock nut, which I didn't order. Initially, I got this at, a, at a True Value. And uh, then that's fine. If you can get it from them, this, it's a one stop shop. You don't have to go to True Value or Ace or whatever. Then the um, spindle shaft, which is 5 8 by 4 and 11 16. Now, I wrote on the kingpin bolt. This is the, not the kingpin bolt, this is the um, spindle bolt, this right here. So this already has 11 degrees in it. So we've machined a little bit more to get 14 degrees. So when it fits up against the, the spindle carrier, I guess you would call it, kingpin, it's straight. You know, it can't be straight, so there's no tension in this. And this is a very heavy-duty bolt. It's already got a little hole for a uh, tie wire or a safety wire. Let's see, that left us there. And then we got the thin nylock. Those aren't here yet. I ordered those recently. Basically, it's the same as this. It's cheaper buying from BMI than is it at the Ace. You can get two different ones. You get the thin one or the thicker one, which is this, this part number here. And this is just going to be the thicker. You know, it's about three quarters of an inch instead of whatever this is, a half inch. Um, the kingpin housing. Uh, this is going to have the bronze bushings, which is what that is. Here's the information on that. It's bronzebushings.com. You'll need four of them if you're going to use the bushings. And I recommend it. Uh, this is basically, I forgot to mention, is basically the Azusa style spindles that we're just upgrading the geometry on. So those are the sizes that we used on that. And then from the local metal supplier, to get this part here, you'll need to buy, I don't know, a foot and a half or so of, of steel because you're going to lose some when you cut it. So it's inch and, a, inch and a quarter OD. The interior measurement, it measures 0.865. It really should be 0.875 because it's a little tight when you put these in there because these are 0.875. So you pretty much have to press those things in pretty hard. And you're going to cut them to 2.25 inches. And then the U-bolts. Uh, for the inch and a half axle, here's the description. You can see those five sixteenths by one and three quarter by three inch. That's the size I'm using. You can use a different size or a thicker piece if you can find it. Um, that's what these are over here. And then here's the information on the KPI: fourteen degrees. Caster is seven degrees on mine. You can go more. The KPI works out. I think some guys have done twelve degrees and been successful. I'm setting the camber at zero, uh, so that means my wheels will be straight up and down. They're not going to be tilted in at the top or tilted in at the bottom. An Ackerman angle, roughly, um, it ends up being one inch from center. So if you were to draw a center line straight back to the back of the cards and move it over one inch, that, that's about where it works out. But we'll confirm that when we um, string line everything up and get all those cuts made. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to talk about on this part of the video? Oh, when I made these, uh, these are quarter inch steel. I drilled them for the U-bolts to fit, and I made these a little closer together so that they're a little closer together when you put them under the spring. So 
Let me show you the spring here. So when you put them in the spring, see how that's just ground flush there? Then the bolts are really close to the spring. So they're not, if I put them like this, they're really, there's a bigger space. On mine, there's a big space. So it helps it just kind of keep everything kind of captured and in one spot so it doesn't move around, hopefully. And hopefully this will keep your axle from sliding back and forth. Especially when you're assembling, it's a lot easier um, to uh, get this mounted. So you're not trying to, so you don't have six things moving at one time. All you have to do is worry about the rotation of the axle, getting that straight up and down when you tighten it up. And when I'm doing this at first, I'm using just the standard little nuts that comes with. But I do have nylocks for the final installation. Uh, like I said before, the final installation, you want to use nylocks to keep things. Okay, so right now we're going to confirm the Ackerman angle. So I've got a piece of string taped to the center of the kingpin here and run all the way to the back to the center of the axle back here. It's marked by that pencil line and piece of tape. And what this is doing is helping me establish exactly where the Ackerman is going to be um, relative to the center line right here. So remember I told you the Azusa, this is what the Azusa would look like. It's parallel back, so that little circle is, tells you where the kingpin would be located. So we're moving it about an inch inboard toward the inside, which is what this represents. So that little hole, if I can get it straight on there, pretty much straight down from there is where the hole is going to be. And so I'm going to drill the holes next, and then what I'm going to do is tack it while it's on the cart. And I'm going to get it parallel to the ground, and it's going to take a little bit of monkeying around but I, so that I can get this hole in the right spot according to this line. So, last time it was a bit of a process, I'm sure it's going to be a bit of a process this time too, because uh, I don't really have a fixture built for this. So, and we want these to be parallel to the ground, because uh, as they go through their travel, they arc up and down. I'll show you that, what that looks like here after we get this assembled. Okay, so I've got this kind of jigged up. Uh, strings run on both sides. You can see straight down on the string that the uh, hole for the control arm is right there for the tie rod. And I'm um, just using a, a bar going across the frame there. Both strings are on it toward the back. I think we're just about ready to weld that right there on both sides. I'll show you what the other side looks like as well. So you kind of just use all kinds of different stuff to get these things. You've got the tie rod so that they're straight and square. And there's this one you can see on top. You get the string kind of overhead. So that's kind of what you're looking for. And that's what it's going to be welded to. So anyway, and that should be give us clearance because the tie rod will be on top. It'll give us clearance across here. I might shim this up about, I don't know, a quarter inch or something. It gives us a, this is about five eighths of an inch, I suppose. Ah, uh, maybe it's okay. I like it down a little lower below this so I can get a full weld around there. So that may be just fine. Um, I'll think about that for a minute, but then uh, we'll get this thing welded up. Okay, so I got these, uh welded up. I, I went ahead and gusseted them with a piece of quarter inch plate that I had scrap metal laying around. And I'll clean the welds up a little bit. Those turned out pretty good. Um, surprising it's been about an hour ago. The metal's still pretty hot. So I welded up all the way around. I cleaned that one up a little bit because it was a little bit thick. Um, it's going to turn out pretty good. So I'll go ahead and put them on the car see what they look like now. Um, yeah. Made some pretty good progress there. Okay, so I went ahead and mounted it back on the chassis and using this little bar and clamp just to simulate um, where the tie rods are going to go. And I've got a, a straight bar going across the whole front to make sure that the um, axles are straight, kind of in relation to each other. So I'll show you that. Get a push back to where you can see this, what this bar is. It's just a straight piece of half inch bar. Um, anyway, to give you a perspective on how I'm laying this out, and if you look down the string line, that tie rod lays pretty much right on or bolt hole. So that's your Ackerman. And the string goes all the way back to the center of the rear axle, which when I was building it, we marked here and marked it on the axle. So it kind of carries over. So doing some things on this one that you don't necessarily have to do on a standard cycle cart. Uh, this is kind of above and beyond, kind of an evolutionary thing. And I really wanted this thing to handle well for my dad. Mine handles really very nicely. And I wanted to do that for him. I'll probably do the same upgrade on my son's card at some point. So it steers a little bit better. So we're going to call that the end of video number seven. We got the front um, spindles completely fabricated, the front axle installed. Uh, we got the Kingston inclination, Ackerman, Castor and Camber all set up. I went ahead and dismounted the tie rod just, to, just for the purpose of doing it. Uh, next, coming up soon, we'll put the steering system in it, steering wheel, steering column, pedal assembly. So that's coming up next. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. 
feel free to share these videos if they're helpful to you and comment if you have questions. Uh, follow us on Facebook and have a great day. Thanks for watching, guys.